Hey everybody and welcome to this week's episode of just going to make something up because I don't have a specific show for this. Um, but I was interviewed by these two lovely ladies a couple, it was a couple of weeks ago. Hey. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it, yeah. yeah. Alison and um, Maya, and they also share a love and passion for all things um, repeat. They also work with women and they have this really um, cool podcast, Integrate Yourself. Is that, Mm-hmm. Yeah, just to make sure I yeah. said it right. Um, but I thought just quickly before we move on to the topic that we're going to talk about, could you just each of you just share with the viewers a bit about your background and, and who you are and, and, and what you do? And then we're going to talk about sugar, the dreaded anyway. poisonous <laughs> sugar and some of the misconceptions around sugar and why I think women are just so scared of it and why they shouldn't be scared of it. But anyway, That's over to you. Mm. Great subject to talk about. Mm. Mm. Thank you so much for having us on your show, Kitty. We really appreciate it. <laughs> this is my new show. This can be yeah, the, what, whatever just, it's called. It, it's, it's ask just, integrate yourself. That's what it can be <laughs> there called. You go. That's perfect. <laughs> so, so, like my, I'll start with my background. I was a gymnast for twenty around. Well, actually, from the age of 50, 50, 50 from the age of five to twenty one. <laughs> So a long time. And um, so I was, you know, dealing with um, kind of as being that kind of an athlete, a very competitive gymnast. I was dealing with a, I realized that later on that I was dealing with a low metabolism mm. because I was constantly having, you know, I was using so much energy, probably not eating enough. And um, then just be binge eating when I got home from practice every night, because I'd be practicing for four hours. And so later on, you know, I translated into just in my teenage years and then as I got older in college, just over drinking and, you know, not, and then at that time it was the low fat era. So I would eat all these like no fat, like cookies and stuff and, you know, just, and took birth control and all those things. <laughs> I, and we all did. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, and then, you know, later on everything kind of got better, but I still like had this, um, yeah, I wasn't really now? a big sugar eater at the time. I'm, I'm now I'm 46, but, um, are you 46? Yeah. Well, actually I'm not yet 46. I don't know why I said wow. that. I'll be 46 on November 1st. So it's coming. You soon, look like you're I'm about 40. 30, like early thirties. I would have thought. Oh, thank you. That's amazing. Well, I, I have to oh. contribute it to the Ray Pete inspired food because I feel like it really Deliver. has to be. <laughs> I mean, yeah, the That's, skin is great from it, you know, mm. so, and the hair too. Um, but anyway, mm. to make a long story short, um, I got into the fitness industry because I was having severe digestive issues after mm. I have two kids. So after my mm. uh, second pregnancy and I was in bed, like just, um, I, I, I was told I had a parasite and, you know, I just, I couldn't function. I couldn't play with my kids. I felt like, mm. you know, this couldn't be right. I was so young to be feeling this way. And then they would, you know, the doctors didn't know what to do. They'd give me Tums mm. or something. Mm. And so, and that of course made it worse. And I didn't have any idea what good food was at the time. I just thought low sugar, mm. you know, so I was doing all at the time it was like Splenda and all these terrible things. And that probably contributed to it too. So, I finally stumbled upon uh, Paul Check's work with organic food. And he talked about, you know, how to eat and how clean, what clean, eat, uh, clean eating is. And I was, I, it, it changed my life and I started going gluten free. And so that was my, my gateway into the holistic food realm. And then from there, I actually went totally extreme. I went on the antifungal diet for like three years, like no sugar. And all I did, I think during that time, I was craving sugar the entire time. Mm. And I would try these crazy things, like try to make all these vegan like uh, desserts and stuff because I needed sugar so bad, but I couldn't have it. And so uh, finally, I just, I said, you know, uh, I... (laughs) I knew Josh Rubin from the Czech Institute. So I started working with him and I was like, I got to do something because this isn't working for me where I have no energy. My libido sucks. And I just, I've lost all this weight, but it was like, I realized that it was a lot of muscle mass, but, mm. and so, you know, I'm like, I, you know, I was like getting so small for all my clothes, but I wasn't, I didn't have any muscle left. So mm. I wasn't really Pretty functional. Fat. I didn't have a lot. Exactly. Mm-hmm. I didn't have a lot of energy and all that. It just didn't feel right. I felt like I was too young to be feeling like that. So I got with Josh and he's like, have you ever thought about eating sugar again? <laughs> and <laughs> I was like, what? 
what? <laughs> like at the time I couldn't, I couldn't wrap my brain around it. I was like, what are you talking about? Eat sugar. And so we started talking about, you know, bringing root vegetables and fruits back into the diet. And I slowly was able to do that. And finally I was able to drink milk again. And that was amazing. And so I, I felt like the most amazing I'd ever felt when I started doing that. And I've never looked back from there. So uh, what I did was, um, you know, I was teaching people the other stuff before. And then at that time, I don't even remember what year it was. Um, it's probably like maybe eight years ago, I started like incorporating the Ray Pete inspired stuff with people. Mm -hmm. And so now I'm a holistic, uh, I call myself holistic, but I'm a, a metabolic nutrition mm -hmm. and fitness coach. And I help people with, um, you know, bringing in the weightlifting, building muscle mass and bringing function, moving better. Mm -hmm. And then also uh, being able to have a functional metabolism. So creating abundant energy, better recovery mm -hmm. and hormonal balance with your food foundation mm. oh, it's just you think so many because the majority of the women in our program in their 40s and they've got mm -hmm. kids some in their 30s like me some we've got some women in their 50s um but yeah it's that, just the same thing like they've gone through the same thing completely cut out sugar they're exhausted they've got kids um yeah. and you know it's it's and like I just actually did a like you know the sugar babe show I interviewed another client and she's like down seven kilos eating 2100 calories a day strength training two to three days a week like, That's awesome. do you know what I mean? It's like, if you do it properly, yeah. it's like people think, oh my God, I'm going to gain weight. It's like, well, like majority of the time, it's like, you're not going to gain weight. You know, like if you, I no. think like for, in my experience you, with it. You have to balance mm. the movement out with mm. the, with the, you know, amount of calories you're taking mm. in. So if you're taking mm. a lot of calories and you're not moving, yeah, you probably will gain some mm. weight, but mm. You know, it all, it's all a balance. And um, mm -hmm. I think, like you said, most time, most of the time people aren't eating enough. That's why they're holding on to all that weight. Mm. And then they binge eat. They binge. Like Which, they just, oh, they just, right, they, right. they just got to be consistent. Like I'm just, it's that inconsistency. Yeah. Like I see it with the women. Oh, anyway, so we, we'll talk about this. I'm cutting off. Let's talk about mine now <laughs> before we get into the <laughs> talking about the sugar. Thanks, Alison. Yeah, I still can't believe you're 46. That's amazing. You all, you look like you're about, I was like, oh, she's like early thirties. <laughs> You both look good. Yeah. You both got great skin. You both look young, hardly any wrinkles. I have Amazing. to say you look pretty good yourself, Kitty. So oh, thanks, thanks very much. Well, I've, I've got the you know, full face <laughs> of makeup on. <laughs> <laughs> I love to like dry, blow dry my hair and put my makeup on and stuff. You know, like when you've got the big muscles, you still want to look pretty sometimes. You oh, know? yeah, yeah, totally. You want to have that feminine part. Right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Anyway, sorry. <laughs> Go, my. <laughs> No now, how old are you? Should we start with how old you are first? <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah, lead right into there. Yeah. So my birthday is on Saturday and I, oh. think, I think I'm turning 48. I can't remember Fuck. now. Oh, 48. Oh, wow. What year were you born? born? I know I think I'm an older, or an year, a year older than you, I think, Allison. I think, or at least um, I'm... You might be, yeah. I can't believe you guys are like nearly you know, 50. I, you know, I literally... <laughs> I know, it's wild. It's I incredible. I don't yeah. want to think about it. You, look, you both look think. really good. <laughs> like, look at your skin. It, like, you look so young. Just a testament, right, to this way of eating. Absolutely. Yeah, and it matters. You know, people don't think about that part of it. Mm. So, so my story is um, mm. I was a, a, an Ironman competitor, and I did 10 Ironmans in eight years. And talk about, like, what we're talking about, was like, uh, how your uh, stress. Is yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I was starting to accelerate the um, uh, aging process. I mean, I had a lot more wrinkles in my face. I had a lot more, I was really uh, emaciated in a way. In some ways I was 160 pounds at my like top rate. So what's weight. that? Remember we're in Australia, so we're talking the kilos. Oh, so that's yeah. like divided by 2.2. So <laughs> that's eight, like, that's eight, pretty. I have no idea. Yeah. Well, oh, that's eight, less than 80, 70 yeah. or something. So that's so, what that's. And I'm six feet tall. So. Yeah, wow. um, I was really lean, but I was no, there wasn't math. It was like watching a marathon runner, right? You got that lean, lean body with no real muscle. Yeah. yeah. And, um, so, um, my story goes a little bit like this. Um, I compet I wasn't a competitor when I was younger. So I decided after college to jump in to do in swimming, met some people got into, um, running cause in, a, in Atlanta, there's a 10 K that's, the largest and and you know has tons and millions i don't know how many people now 
Um, but they run this thing every July 4th. And so I started running, started swimming. Uh, I started doing marathons. So like I did all the top ones. I did uh, Boston and in, in Chicago and all the big ones, New York. And so I had already a big running background when I met some people that were running for a group called Galloway. And Galloway taught you how to run marathons, but use like a pacing system that you do yeah. like five minutes on, one minute off. Yeah. And um, so you get into the, you know, into your group, right? And you start learning how to run and you start learning, getting faster. So I, you know, did my do there. And then when I met these people, they said, oh, some friends of mine said, hey, we're going to do an Ironman. And I had no clue. And I thought, all right, at least I know how to swim. So I trained for my first Ironman while doing a um, uh, three-man team where I was a swimmer and the other two biked and, and ran. And we all trained together and we did our first Ironman. I think it was in 1999, mm. um, Lake Placid. And then I got hooked down in that road and went for 10 years, uh, eight, 10 of them for eight years. So I did double, I did, you know, I went crazy. I literally took it as a job mm. and my times got really good. I almost qualified for Kona, but then things started to deteriorate in a, now knowing the information that I have through what I talked to you about, yeah. My profession now is a is through a neurology and um, metabolic um, nutrition and kind of what I do with people right now is I look through that lens of how your body is looking for your safety and so mm -hmm. um, if you follow anybody who does any of this work um, one of the groups I work with is uh, Z Health Institute mm -hmm. out of Phoenix and they actually um, help you understand like safety is your brain. Like your brain will not let you move anywhere farther than it feels you're safe. It doesn't mm. matter how many hours you put in as much. I mean, yes, you have an economic mm. way of doing something, mm. but once you start to degrade, your brain has to relearn something because it loses the map of where your body is in space or it becomes too under unregulated so it doesn't have the energy to fulfill everything mm. Mm. so when i work with people i start to recognize what are you what's happening that's limiting you from being able to do is it the fuel that's knocking you down like you don't mm. are you under eat and you mm. over exercise mm. um have you lost faculties in your scene you know like because we don't do eye drills we don't do mm. anything to literally create um what we were born with which is uh, you know the ability for the eyes to move to do all you know ranges mm. of motion and all these things kind of come into play mm. and so now looking back at my my athletic side of me I um, followed the pathway of like trying to find what was wrong with myself so you know we I met Allison through the Czech Institute as she mentioned we um we studied with them for a while met Josh um, and then started to individually start going down the path of studying Ray's work. And mm -hmm. each of these times that we ended up um, finding that we both really realized like everyone needs to know this information because mm -hmm. it's basically giving back your um, uh, health and your authority yeah. of your health. Yeah. And yeah. so the freedom to actually not get caught up in diets, not to get feared of sugar, fear of carbs, fear of, you know, explaining why you might become more vegetarian versus an eat meat eater, what your mm -hmm. tendencies kind of come into based on your stress of your, your gut. Um, is your gut functioning enough to even allow your brain to work? Mm -hmm. And so um, when I started to work through Ray's work, I started to meet other people. And um, so then Z Health came into my um, field, and now that's what I focus on with a lot of my clients is just helping them not drain mm -hmm. so much of their energy that they are actually helping their brain mm -hmm. actually function better yeah. so that they can keep moving better. Because mm -hmm. even if you put that person that moves really well, like a really good athlete, Hmm. They still have issues and that issues is what are you going to find that's actually keeping them from having even better movement? Hmm. Um, because one of the issues we find, I find a lot with even like weight loss or any issues with um, rehabbing hmm. is that it takes tons more energy 
than you ever thought. Mm. <laughs> oh. <laughs> you got a drive-by. Gotta... <laughs> was that a plane? I think it was either a plane or um, we've got the Gold Coast 600 on um, this oh. weekend. So they're like, but was that a car? Was that... What was oh, that? Oh, the plane. Yeah, oh, it sounds like a plane. I Craig's like, like, you're in a fucking idiot. That's not a plane. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God, it flew so quiet. But the, our dog wins in our chocolate laboratory. He's like, oh, what was that? Sorry. <laughs> Keep going. That's okay. Yeah, no problem. <laughs> Um, I was going to say the brain and the sugar, you know, connection, like you're saying, like that is huge. And, you know, if you don't have enough energy, like Maya's saying, to lose the weight, to actually uh, muster up the energy to move better and exercise and learn new things, that's a big mm -hmm. deal, you know? Yeah. Life's just so much better with carbs and sugar in. <laughs> <laughs> we just make it so complicated. Oh, you know, God, I know. And it's based on um, theories of just what what the what sells in the big market, right? Like the bigger markets are the the drug companies or mm. the insurance companies or the, mm. uh, the supplement yeah. company or mm. anyone who is trying to sell a product that says, "Hey, this will help you take mm. this instead of mm. eating real food." But then people get overwhelmed, right? Because they're so freaking tired all the time, right? Yeah, yeah. And, and, one of the things I was um, watching was a guy who's a um, like the strongest man in the world. He does those, um, oh, what's his name? Um, he does the, the big lifts. Yeah. yeah. Oh, there we go again. I don't know what's going on. <laughs> what is it, Craig? Is it so like... Uh, sorry. I don't know what right. they're doing. Maybe an air show or something. I don't Maybe. Know. Yeah. So, so mainly what he, what I was watching is it's on YouTube actually. Mm. He talk about his diet, right? And how mm. he uses things. And he literally eats like eight times a day, 10,000 calories, right? He's the strongest yeah. guy in the world. He says the hardest part of being that is the eating part. Constantly eating, constantly. Yeah. He's, his whole program is he has to wake up on a certain time just to eat. Eat. If and he ain't going to do any performances. It doesn't matter. Like, and, yeah. and so, like when you're an athlete, you know what you're right. You, you sign yourself out for, right? You got to mm. like, Hey, I, I know mm. I'm going to have to do this if I want to be on the top of my game. And you mm. reach that. But most people don't remember they are athletes themselves. They just have a different bucket of stress that's mm. manageable one day not manageable the next day and then is thrown out the window when they travel like mm. you know, yeah. if you have bad digestion you're going to have a hard time getting anything in and you're going to mm. feel like oh i'm eating everything in the world then mm. you give mm. yourself pleasure of having so-called sugars carbs whatever because you know yeah. it's sweet it's bad for you whatever oh. you've got your Leaving, you it's get it. your brain. Your brain has is it, Craig's recording it. Is this I, like the first time that's happened? This is the first time this has happened. I'm like, good, yeah. good timing. Thanks, Plane. So um, weird. <laughs> and that's probably a good lead into what we're going to talk about is about sugar and why yeah. do you think that? Because I feel like that, like the industry or like the health industry or doctor, whatever you want to bloody call it, it's like it's fads. You know, like it was fat, mm -hmm. like you said, it's the low fat. And then yeah. now it's moved to sugar. So why do you think that sugar is so demonized? Like why? I, I think because it's, you know, in the fast food industry that we, mm. they talk about sodas and they, and there, mm. there are like, like Kate Deering has said on her show before, there are some repercussions of having too much sugar. If mm. you're just eating sugar and no nutrients, right? So it's a mm. metabolic stimulant. But mm. if you have no nutrients to go with it, it does mm. create havoc in the body and you can mm. gain weight if you do too much without enough exercise, right? Or movement. So if there's no balance there. And if someone has a, you know, a metabolism that's super uh, mm. damaged, then yeah, there's going to be repercussions. So that's why we teach people how to um, eat it with nutrients. Like Oh, here we go. 
Yeah, yeah. It must Dude. be some kind of an air show or something. Oh, it's crazy. Maybe but, uh, it's, maybe they're yeah. practicing for the for the. It in, sounds like the, it. Six the, the casting, but that's literally what you say. It's like you've got to look at the in mm-hmm. context because it's like you know yeah. these people that go oh you know but I cut all the sugar out of my diet and I feel good but I'm like yeah that's because you mm-hmm. if you look at their actual diet like that sugar movie like you know the sugar movie the sugar film yes like yeah, I compared yeah. I think we talked about this my diet versus his and I actually eat more sugar but it's not only white sugar it's fruit honey juice you know yeah. um, but look at the rest of the diet like I don't have any of the issues that he has it's because they they're eating sugar with polyunsaturated fats and all this other right. crap like, of course, like, it's like, use your brain. Like, it's sort of like people yeah. have the ability to think for themselves, you know? Yeah. But it's like and when a you lot like, of people, mm. A lot of people can't handle the starch either. Yeah. I mean, if you have mm. bad digestion, you're not going to be able to eat yeah. the starch with the sugar either. That's going to really yeah. cause havoc. So, you know, um, and even with fruit, sometimes people have a hard time with some of the fibers. So, you know, it's like you're, you're always seeing where you're at, you know, with that, mm. like, yeah. and it's making it better. This is going to be an interesting show. <laughs> and it's like, like when you say to people, like, I'm like, why is sugar so bad? Oh, they can't tell you. They're just like, it's bad. But white sugar, it's the same as the sugar found in fruit and honey and OJ. It's exactly it the same. Is. Structurally yeah. the same. Yeah. Just that fruit and the latter contains vitamins, minerals, and fiber. So it's like white sugar isn't poison. It's just empty energy. It's just energy with no mm-hmm. nutrients attached to it. So like, of course, it would be dumb to go and just eat 10 cups of white sugar. I think people just go to these crazy extremes, right? you know, yeah, um, yeah. And, and they don't understand like you, you were talking about like your cells, like all your cells run off sugar, off glucose. Yeah. But- and I think people, you know, and also, you know, just like with any metabolic stimulant, like I think you can get some negative effects if your body mm. can't keep up with it, you know? Yeah. Like you can start. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Sorry. That's Sorry. Okay. I mean, but you know, like acne and, 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 you know, because if there's lack of other nutrients in the diet and so, um, but, uh, but yeah, I think, I think it's really misunderstood, um, you know, why we, why sugar is so bad. And I think there's probably many reasons for it. Um, you know, uh, yeah, go ahead. One reason is, is because like, the medical field gets involved too, right? Yeah, I was going to say, yeah, exactly. If you get diabetes, you know, majority of the people that have come in have, you know, extremely high blood sugars, right? But it's yeah. not, they don't look at it as an, a metabolic dysfunction. They look mm. at it as a collection that you're actually, you know, eating too much sugar and... and- Sorry. Sorry. <laughs> Craig's out there with his little phone. He's at cap- <laughs> Sorry, go on. So they, they fear monger it and make it an issue. Like you can't have a lot of sugar in your diet. You won't process it. It's too much. Insulin will increase. Yeah. And yet you're in a metabolically rich system. It is actually something that's useful. But mm. if you look at what helps the diabetic, it's the orange juice. If someone's mm. going through the It is true. Juice, they yeah. give that right away because it's an emergency because it actually does the same function as what they need yeah but they don't they 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 take a, um, an image of one situation they take that test and they say yeah. oh your high blood pressure your blood sugar's high you're gonna you're you're on the verge of being a diabetic and we yeah. know that sliding scale moves closer and closer sorry Our dog's like sitting there with city he's like looking out the window. Hey, buddy. It's all right. He's a bit scared. You know that slide gets moved more and more because the drug companies keep trying mm. to push it past the mm-hmm. – there's no attainability, right? You, mm. can't, you can't keep it down here. Is, is, there's, you know, function – you have to variable, you know. Mm. One day you're going to have high, mm-hmm. one day you're going to have sure. low. And, and, and so they take an image of that one picture and they say, well, you're going to have a problem with your, your baby. You're going to have an issue mm-hmm. with um, how you're going to function. You're going to gain weight. And so, yeah, that happens with people who don't have the ability to metabolically take it in. And we mm-hmm. talked about this. And then you got the whole idea of what happens when the person actually needs the, the sugar. So you mm-hmm. have a problem of it. You tell them, don't do it. But mm-hmm. if you get something 
stress, they need it. So like someone who has really bad digestion, mm. that's why Ray, you know, you said, you know, take, take the non pulp orange juice and mm. the milk, and then you mm. utilize it for when you're having your highest stress. Well, mm. you know, like everybody, they go on a bandwagon, take the whole diet and think that's all you're supposed to eat. Yeah. Right? I, yeah. To go in eating normally yeah. and have your sugar within your food, with your food, so that your ratios yeah. and your, your frequencies are great. Mm. But if you take all this out of context, you're gonna take you're gonna cause all this fear, all this worry, and you're just gonna mm. look for what you're trying to look for, right? Uh -huh.